Hello and welcome to Digital Photo Mentor live stream. Today we are going to be talking about old photos and photo restoration. It is a sunny, melty Edmonton today. And let us know in the chat where you're joining in from. And I'd love to know if you are first time here at the live. I see lots of familiar names. So let me just say hello, Marguerite. I've got your image. Karen from Grand Cayman, Julia, Marilyn, Gary. Welcome, Gary. Um, have you joined us before? Let us know in the chat. Hey, Linton, good to see you from Australia. Todd, hey, Sheila, I've got your image as well. Holly, yes, daylight savings. We all lost an hour of sleep last night if you are in a daylight savings zone. So hopefully everybody got their calendars and their clocks adjusted and they're showing up on time today. <laughs> sunny Alaska, yes, it is sunny here too. Windy and rainy Oregon, Western Oregon. Oh, which part of Western Oregon are you? Um, we've been all down the coast. We love Oregon. Love, love, love Oregon. Um, Nick, Marty, I've got your images as well. And I've got a ton of David's images. Um, you set some really great examples. Thanks for that. Um, and some, some particular things to work on. So that's great. So if you are watching on Facebook from Mechanicsburg, um, we don't get to see your name unless you sign in um, to the StreamYard um, app on Facebook or come and join us on YouTube. So just click the video link and come and join us on YouTube and then you can comment here and we'll be able to see your name like these other folks here. New Zealand, Robbie, welcome. I don't think we've seen you before. Welcome, thanks for joining us. She said, where's Holly's avatar? Rob says he likes her avatar. Oh, with her hat. Uh, Willamette Valley. Oh, yeah, okay, we love that area. Yes, adjust the clock on your camera. Good tip, Holly. So your camera, some cameras actually have a setting for daylight savings even. Uh, but yes, if you're photographing and you want the timestamp on your images correct, adjust the camera as well, um, time on your camera. Another Facebook joiner from Arizona. Welcome. And NetTuber. Excellent topic. Okay, so thanks for that. We're going to dive right into it. Um, I've got a lot of great images to show you. I'm just trying to drink my coffee here as well. So let me hop over to my editing programs here. So I've got, I've got some in Luminar. And I've got some in, oh, where are we here? Yeah, so my, what's happened here is I've lost, um, I had, I lost my, my Luminar catalog, actually. So let me see if I can switch catalogs successfully. And uh, let's see. Okay, see if I can do this correctly. I had to go to a backup, so I had some problems with my, my catalog. All right, so let's just see if I can get to the ones in here. Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. All right, so I've got a bunch of images that you all sent in, and I've got them in Lightroom and in Luminar, and I'm going to be working on probably mostly Photoshop, but for those that requested Luminar specifically, I'm going to do that. So for Mike, if Mike is watching, uh, Mike Miller sent me one of the only, the only one that sent me a scanned negative. So for those of you that have never actually seen a negative or film, I mean, if you took film back in the day, I'm sure you've seen them. Okay. So this is what a black and white negative looks like. So I'll show you how to work with that to be able to make um, a print. And then he also sent a color image and I'm not sure if it was made from that same negative. They look the same, but this negative is definitely not in color. So, um, I'm not sure how they got a color print out of it because this is a black and white negative. All right. So we've got a lot of different issues. Um, we've got things like this where there's a texture on the print. Okay. Can you see that? So the print itself seemed to, um, have a texture and this is possibly even the, the, it's possibly from either 
the surface of the print when it was printed or it was in an album where it was stuck to something, you know, if they're trying to restore it. So there's this, this weird texture. So that's one issue we can try and work with. We've got things like um, David sent in a couple of color images where, you know, they're super faded. Um, the color has shifted, right? This looks very kind of 70s. And it's funny because <laughs> this is the kind of look that we, we, you know, use a lot or use some cross processing and in, in our curves to get this kind of thing on digital images now, right? We want it to look like this. And now we're trying to take an old photo that looks like that and fix it. So there's kind of this weird um, duality there. Okay, then we've got a lot of sort of older brown tone CP images. And these are great images, David, like really nice scans, really clean. Um, the images themselves, the prints are in really good shape, right? There's not a lot of damage. But things like, um, you know, there's not a lot of contrast here. If we want to punch up the contrast, we, we can do that. This one is actually probably a pretty easy one that I can show you that. And then we've got ones like this where there's some, you know, a little bit of damage, some tears in the image, things like that, right? Um, Catherine sent in a couple and she had trouble sending, but the it looks like she's scanning with a flatbed scanner and it's um, scanned it, you know, the whole thing, right? So ideally you want to get a scanner that will help you crop just to the image so that you don't have to crop every single time. Um, and the scans need to be a lot bigger as well, right? This one is only 2,500 by 3,500 pixels. But when I crop this, oop, let's just go back to the other one. Let's go back to this one. So when I crop this, if I come into the edge of the, the white edge, if we want to keep the white edge of the print, uh, let's just see if it's straight as well. So I'm going to come in as close as I can. Yeah, it looks pretty straight. So when I come into just the white edge, um, then we come back. Yeah, it's a little bit crooked. So I might just give it a slight rotation. There we go. That's better. So now when we come back and look at the size, okay. Oh, it's not giving me the crop size. There we go. Can you see this here? This cropped size, it shows 1,042 by 1,053. So this is only 1,000 pixels um, on both dimensions, right? And Catherine indicated that she wanted to work on this in Luminar. So I can certainly do that. And if you have a small scan or a small print like this, then you want to use the upscale, right? So we can do that in, in Lightroom or Photoshop um, and also in Luminar with the um, upscale AI, right? Because you have to increase the size, right? Okay. Oh, no daylight savings in Cayman. So nice. <laughs> nice. Rob has indicated, I didn't know scanners could detect them and only scan one item. I didn't know that was possible. Um, yeah, some scanners will crop to the item automatically for you. So if you're getting, if you're getting a scanner, um, like she could have put six images on this scan at one time and it would have given her six different images if it was that kind of scanner. So it depends on the options that you have on your scanner. So instead of doing one by one, if they're small like this, you could have done, you know, four or six at a time. So check on the options. Yeah. David says view scan has auto crop feature. That's, um, it's the software that comes with the scanner. Is that correct, David? And that's a particular kind of scanner. Epson Perfection. Does it scan Richard and crop? And Stephanie says her old Epson auto detects as well. So yeah, so some do, it sounds like. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing. And you want to make sure that your scans are larger as well, because ultimately um, the original scan here is only 2,500 by 3,500 of the full thing. And if we look at some of David's scans, for example, his are 5,000 on the long side. Okay. So the original scans are much bigger, 
right? So you want to scan at the highest resolution possible so that we have some, some room to work on things. Okay, so size of scanning. This one here is really small and really dark. And unfortunately, I don't even think I'm going to be able to do anything with this one because it's only 500 pixels wide. So I don't know if the original was really small. Um, Nat sent this in. I don't know if the original is really small or if the scan was just too small, but it needs to be much larger to be able to do anything with because you're dealing with so few pixels here. And then we've got a couple of really good ones from Sheila here of these family photos. And I'm actually going to use this one because it's got um, some issues here with a, a missing piece and some scratches and stuff. So we're going to see what we can do with that in Photoshop. Okay. So let's see, where do we want to start? Um, let's actually start with Sheila's because this one is a really common type of issue. Okay. So I could do some editing in here to kind of punch up the contrast a little bit as well. I could turn it into, um, right now it's, you know, it's a color, is it a color scan? It's a JPEG and it is black and white. It looks like it's already been scanned as grayscale. So there's no color to worry about. So that's good. Right. So I could adjust the contrast here to start. So if I want to do that, I can just do shift double click on the whites in the blacks. Okay. And it immediately picks up a lot more contrast. Right. I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. And I want to lower the exposure because I see that all the, the brightness is towards the, the right side of the scale, which means white. So I'm going to darken it just a little bit. Okay. Now the faces have gone a little bit dark, so we can, we can play with that, you know, maybe a little bit of shadows, but I want to see what Photoshop is going to do if I just bring this in to Photoshop. Okay. So I don't want to go too crazy here. Let's just take this into Photoshop because it's got these new neural filters. Okay. So how I'm going to do this is right click and edit as a smart object. Okay. Um, Richard says, I assume best to scan to TIFF rather than JPEG. If your if your scanner has that option, yes, it would be a better choice. And you notice that uh, David's scans were TIFF as well. So that's a 16 bit. It gives you a larger file um, and more to work with. So yes, if that's an option for your scanner, absolutely. ViewScan is a good option when your scanner software no longer supported. Oh, that's a good tip. There you go. View scan still exists. The latest version is 9.8.13. Ah, you have to buy it. Okay. Okay. Well, good tips, you guys. So it sounds like I know David has done a lot of photo restoration. So it sounds like you guys have done a lot more of this than I have. Okay. So what we're going to do in here, uh, you can see I've got my layers. And I'm not going to use generative fill. Okay. I'm not going to use content aware fill, we're going to use the one of the new neural filters. So to get to that, you go up to filters, neural filters. And some of these are still in the beta testing. Okay, so you can see down here where it says photo restoration. And it's in beta testing, but I've already downloaded it. So you have to click on it and install it. So for example, one that I haven't installed yet, um, like this one here, landscape mixer. If you go to one that you haven't got yet, you'll see this link and you just have to download it. And then it installs this beta test filter into Photoshop. So I've already done that with the photo restoration one. Okay. And it opens up and it, these are the defaults. And then there's another panel of adjustments here. Okay. So photo enhancement, it's automatically set to 50. But what I did was I wanted to see what these things are doing. So I cranked it up to a hundred, right? And see what it's doing. It's adding that contrast, right? If I bring this back down, but it did a whole bunch of other things too. Um, it did a really great job on a different image that I, I tried it on. So I'm going to bring that up and we notice the faces are kind of blurry. So I'm going to try this slider, which says enhance face. Now, these ones here, you'll notice that it starts saying processing on device because it's pulling from the cloud again, okay? Um, photo retouch and neural filters works well. Yes, it does, exactly. Okay, so now it's bringing, it's, it's 
trying to enhance the faces, okay? So can you see what it's doing? In some cases, it's doing a good thing we can do before and after, okay? So you can see what this filter is doing, but look at this lady's teeth, right? It looks a little weird. Can you see what it's done to her teeth? Like in this one here? So it's sharpened the faces, but in a bizarre way, like it's picked up her face and done a nice job. And I see that it's trying to pick up her face and so on, but their bodies are out of focus. So it's a little bizarre. Okay, so I'm gonna dial this back a little bit because it just doesn't look right on the image. Okay, so I wanna enhance the faces, but I don't want to make it look, you know, cartoony. And I found this worked really well on a different image that I tried it on, okay? Let me just back out. Okay, and then down here, you know, on the next slider is scratch reduction. Okay, so I want to see the whole image here. Okay, so remember I said there was this missing piece here and a missing piece here, like a rip. So let's do scratch reduction and take it up quite high. And then comes this processing thing again at the bottom. Um, it can take a minute or two to process. And this is, again, dependent on cloud. Okay, so it's pulling from the cloud to process this. Okay, so see it's only at 30%, so it's taking quite a while. And what I noticed was, I played with it for a few minutes just before we went live, is that once I kind of do that one slider, um, the first time it takes a little bit longer than the next time I move it, make an adjustment. Okay, can you see what it did? Look at, filled in the grass, filled that in. The only thing it didn't do was deal with this white, bit on the side here, okay? So it did a brilliant job of fixing all of the missing bits. So that saves a ton of time, right? Um, David's making a good point here as well. He says, when you're using the neural filter, you can output it as a new layer, meaning you can then mask out corrections that don't work after. I'm doing it slightly differently, David. I'm doing it as a smart object, so I can do the same. So it's on a smart object layer already, okay? Okay, so coming back here, down here, there are some other options for JPEG, artifact reduction, halftone, artifact reduction, color noise, and noise reduction, none of which we really need on this image here. So I'm just going to say yes. And what David's talking about is when you're in these neural filters, anytime you're in a filter like this, it gives you the option, okay, do I want a new layer? Do I want a new layer masked? Or do I want it as a smart filter? So I'm using smart filter, but if you want it as a new layer, you could do that as well, okay? So I'm going to use it as a smart filter. Either way, I can get back to the edits that I, I started, okay? So the reason that I do it as a smart filter as opposed to a layer is when you put it on a layer, you can't come back to the neural filter settings and readjust them, okay? Um, let me just show you the difference, okay? So here, if I want to make any changes, all I have to do is double click on the word neural filter and it opens it up again and all of where I left off is still here, okay? So the settings that I used inside the neural filter are still there, okay? And I can change them if I want versus if I do it as a new layer, Okay, I'm just going to show you what happens. Okay, so let's say I do this as a new layer. I'm just going to do a different one. I'm just going to do smart portrait because I need to do a different one for you. Okay, so let's just say I do this one. And uh, let's see. Yeah, you can do some really strange things. This is a strange filter. <laughs> um, maybe not this one. How about colorize? Let's try colorize. Okay, we'll just do colorize. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so another one that I haven't really played around with much. <laughs> well, if you want your photo to be colored, um, here we go. It's kind of bizarre. Okay, so it looks like we can choose some profiles. Again, this is not something that I have played with. So let's try faded. Okay, so I'm going to apply this one as a layer masked instead, okay, just to show you the difference. So I happened on that by accident. That's quite interesting. And the colors are a little bizarre, but it's trying to add color to a photo that's 
obviously black and white, but let's see what that can do on your actual color photo, right? We've temporarily disabled this filter because of an error. Hmm. Exceeded the timeout limit. Interesting. Okay. Well, there's the filter anyways. Okay. So can you see the difference, um, David, as opposed to, so when I've applied it as a layer, yes, there's the, the color layer. <clears throat> okay. And I can mask it, right? So the color layer is there and I can mask it, right? However, I can't go back and change the color settings. So that's why I always do, um, where's the bottom of my layers panel? That's why I always do a smart filter. Okay. So smart layer as opposed to, let's see the bottom of my layers panel. There we go. Okay, so something happened here with our neural filters. I have to go back and apply it again. Can you see the difference, David? All right, so um, smart filter as opposed to layer with a mask. If you don't think you're going to come back and change the settings, then by all means do the... Um, layer. <laughs> Stephanie said your arms would look like that after 20 minutes in the sun. Yeah, me too. I would look like a lobster. They did look a little burnt, Karen. <laughs> so maybe if we all hung out and came in, we would look like that. Richard, my new, my challenge, my challenge now with Photoshop is that some of the new capabilities require me buying a newer Mac. Otherwise some new AI capabilities will not work. Ah, Okay. <clears throat> it's interesting. Um, so I mean, do you mean that you can't update to get the latest Photoshop? Because I ran into that as well, um, a couple of years ago and I literally had to buy a new, a new computer, a new MacBook pro in order to update my Photoshop and my Lightroom. But because I teach this stuff, I kind of felt that I had to. <laughs> so my, my old one was six years old and I was forced to up, upgrade my computer at that point as well. Cool. Awesome, David. There you go. So there you go. Already learned one thing. Photoshop will not work on your current OS. Yeah, that's exactly the same thing that I ran into. So yeah, I did. I did have to update my Mac as well. Okay. So let me just go back to smart filter here. Make sure I'm on the right thing. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's save this back into Photoshop. Okay. So here's our layer. There's our layer and there's our image. Okay, so what else do we need to fix here? We could crop this image because um, there's a lot of stuff over here. I mean, the, the group is all off center. So you could keep the original, you know, integrity of the original image, right? Or we could crop in just a little bit. Like if I decide I want to just come in to get rid of the white space, we can do that. Like so. Okay. But then what do we want to do about this white area over here? Right. So I can try and and fill that in or enhance it, you know, we can do an adjustment layer and see if we can solve that problem, right? Oh, it's cropped out the neural filters again. I think it takes a moment for the neural filters to reapply every time I do something because it's pulling from there. So I'm going to give it a minute and hopefully it fills these things back in again, right? But I want to see if I can get, we can use generative fill on the side here and see if it will fill in this, this area. Or I could try and use just a curves or a levels adjustment layer. Okay, so I'm going to do, there's my adjustments. Okay, so I'm going to do a levels adjustment. See how I'm doing a adjustment layer. Okay, so I'm not doing it on the actual image. It's an adjustment layer. Okay, and then levels, when you open it, when you double click it, you end up with this properties Okay, under your properties, there's your levels. Now I'm just looking at this area here. Okay, so I want to darken the midtones, darken the whites. You see how that area is picking up nicely? Okay, bring the blacks. Oops, this one. Bring the blacks in. Okay, so I want it only to apply on this area, right? Easy enough to do because we're on this this mask here. So it automatically comes with the mask and I can use the graduated tool. When you hold shift, it keeps it straight. It should keep it straight. It should keep it straight. There we go. Okay. So I, I want to stretch out so that it's covering this area. Okay. 
This is not my best graduated filter here. So I'm trying to blend it so that it blends nicely with the original image. Something like that, but I'm not getting a, the best graduated filter ever. Oops, let's go back here. Make sure we're on black to white. Yes, okay, so it's going from white to black, and like it's making the mask here, see that? It's not blending all that great. Come on, work with me. It's a crazy thing. Come on. There we go. See, I want this to blend better. That's a little better. Okay, so can you see what it's doing? If I turn the mask off, or I turn this layer off, it's just applying, just applying on that section, okay? Now, let's see. Yeah, it still hasn't filled in those neural filters. Interesting. So after I did a crop, it sort of undid them. You notice that? So let's go back here and do it again. I might have to just apply it, because it keeps, it keeps coming back here. I'm going to do it as a layer so then we don't have to keep coming back. Rob says he had to update to get Luminar Neo. Yeah, we had to get Rob a computer as well. So see, this kind of um, work is tedious, right? There's a whole lot of hurry up and wait for things like this. Okay, so I'm going to output this to the new layer. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, um, there we go. Okay, so now we need to fill in this spot here. So this is where I am going to use this generative fill. So to use the generative fill, usually what I'll do is e either um, a lasso. You need to make a selection, okay? So I'm going to use the marquee tool, which is a rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle like that, okay? And then when you're using generative fill, you can type something in here if you want to fill it with a particular thing, or if you just hit enter, it's going to try and use, um, you know, content aware or fill it in with, with something that it thinks is appropriate for that area. So hopefully it will fill in the side of her arm, right? And, eh. oh, I got to put my, got to put it above the levels. There we go. Ah, so yeah, I screwed up. I needed to be on the top. So I'm going to undo this one. And I'm actually going to make a stamp layer. I'm going to turn this levels. Let's get rid of this levels one. I'm going to go to generative. Okay, so we're going to go to generative again. Let's make that selection one more time. So I'm getting the area that's sort of faded. Let's try it one more time. Okay, good. so can you see that I, what I'm doing is not perfect either? Um, and it's kind of a trial and error thing with stuff like this. You have to try something, see how it works, right? Try it again. Okay, so I'm just waiting for that generative fill to come in. Okay, so now it's given me three different options. So the first one, it just cut off the edge of the picture, which is interesting. This one, it's filled with some random stuff. And again, cut off the end. So if I'm not happy with these, right? I can literally just hit enter again and have it draw three more and see if it does any better. I could try and select more of the image so that it has a better idea of what I'm looking for. I find it interesting that it put, you know, the edge of the image here. Oh, that's better. Um, I could have just cropped it, right? So if we look at this layer, it's created a person back here that didn't exist. So it's created a person, right? And some weird things, but it kind of did a nice, a decent thing with this girl here, right? So I would pick the one that is probably the best, right? These ones where it's just cutting off are not working. I could crop if I wanted to do that. So I could go with this and then have a random weird guy in the background that is doesn't exist, 
or I could just go with something like this, right? So it's kind of just filling in some of her, right? And then making nonsense in the background. Again, same thing, right? I kind of don't mind the, the weird guy in the background. We could actually get rid of him, right? So if you want to work with that, we can literally just fill him in with something else, right? So I could do a clone. Um, you can also, like I said, do cloning and healing. So we haven't done any cloning and healing because we've done a lot of the automated stuff here in Photoshop, which is great. When I'm doing cloning and healing on an image, I always make a new layer, a blank layer. Okay, so I, let's just call it cloning. Okay, so I always make a blank layer when I'm doing cloning, okay? And then when I get the, let's use one of the healing tools. I could use the mat. I could use any of these things here. I'm going to use a stamp in this example, okay? I'm going to use a stamp in opacity set to oh, about 40%, okay? So... I want to make sure that my brush is not set to hard. So it's towards the zero end of the scale, a soft brush. Okay. And then when I click here, I want to clone from up here down. So I'm just going to, I'm hitting option. So option. And I'm just cloning down here like this. So I'm just kind of trying to fill in this guy. See, that was too strong. That was too strong. I need a softer brush. Softer brush. There we go. Okay, so let's do that. Even still, cloning at too high a percentage. Let's go 20%. You have to take it real easy when you're doing stuff like this. Okay? And I just kind of get rid of him. Or I could just select him like so. We could try the patch tool, right? Uh, let's see, I need a smaller selection. Patch tool. So I just draw around part of the image and do something like that. There are not enough pixels in the source. Ah, patch tool has to be done on an actual layer. That's the trick on that one. Let's try this one. So I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts here, J to get to my brushes. Okay, so this is the cloning tool or healing, spot healing, right? So it's trying to remove him. Oh, that's a different one. There's all these new tools. There we go. This is spot healing. There we go. Okay, so spot healing just analyzes and fills with content aware. Just want his head gone because he's not a real person, right? There. We just make it into sort of nonsense. There's something here that's nonsense. So this one is great for filling in stuff. I use the spot healing tool a lot. And I'm just kind of going over all this stuff that's nonsensical. It could also blur this area, right? Because now it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, is it better than when we started? Let's have a look. Yes, kind of nonsense up here, right? So I would work a little bit more to kind of get rid of a lot of this stuff here. Maybe cloning, back to the stamp tool. Still cloning in. I'm always making sure that I'm selecting from all layers if I'm doing this retouching layer so that you're, because otherwise you're cloning from a blank layer, right? You can't clone on a blank layer. There's nothing there to clone. I could also just blur this whole area. So 20% opacity when I'm doing this kind of thing and just kind of build it up, right? This is just kind of a mess now. I'm not really happy with that. I've kind of made a mess. 
<laughs> but it's better than what it was. So maybe we can crop a little bit, get rid of some of this stuff. How about that? There we go. Okay, so if we're happy with that, then we just have to save and come back to Lightroom. So that's not too bad, right? From where we started, I had some scratches. I'm gonna save and close this and let's work on something different, right? So when you save and close, it will come back to Lightroom and then you can um, continue editing from there if you want. <laughs> yes, Starling says it was a relative that didn't get invited. Yeah, he was not invited to the party. <laughs> exactly, that's funny. Okay, so let's try something different. So that was the neural filters in Photoshop, all right? Let's try... Ah, Marguerite had a question about cloning. Okay, so I don't understand how you can clone from more than one layer if the top layer is blank. So that little checkoff box where I said all layers. So depending on the tool that you're using, whether it's the stamp or the, the healing tool, when you say all layers, it's drawing from the pixels below as well. So if you're healing or cloning from one area to the other on a blank layer, it will do nothing unless you check that box, right? So it's looking at all the layers below and it considers it considers all the pixels in that area below um, the layer you're on as well, right? So that's why the reason I do a blank layer is that I can alter the layer. <clears throat> For example, if I want to, um, here, I'll just open it up again, I'll show you. So the nasty cloning <laughs> that I did, for example, if I wanted to blur it, I'm going to go back to edit original. This is really important because when you open it a second time, you need to make sure that you open it as original like this, because then your layers will come back. Okay. So you can see that I've got this cloning layer here. Okay. Okay. Right? right this. So the reason that I did it on a blank separate layer is that I could blur this if I want to. Okay. So I can just run a Gaussian blur on this or I'll show you what happens if I make it really blurry. That's too blurry. Okay. So it's kind of just fixing my bad retouching a little bit. Okay. So I can do a blur. Um, I can lower the opacity of it and so on. But if it's a whole layer, it takes up a lot. Like if it's a stamp layer or an image layer, your file gets a lot bigger. Okay. So when I'm cloning on a blank layer, it helps to keep the file smaller. Okay? So blurring it helped a little bit. I hope that answers your question. Ah, good point. I opt to use the terms like remove or delete instead of giving generative fill a prompt, a, pr a blank prompt. Um, it seems to give better satisfactory results. Good tip. Good tip. Okay, so let's come back to Lightroom. Um, I want to look at this one in Luminar as well, and let's look at some of these color ones, okay? So we've got a few different color images, uh, including one from Rob's uncle, right? So these are some sort of various different levels of fadedness, right? Some have color shifts. Some have gone sort of orange. This one is, actually, that's not the original. Uh, where's the original? Oh, no, that is the original. That's the original, yeah. Um, some have gone sort of faded and pink, right? So I want to work on a couple of different ones. Okay, so David's first. Let's deal with this one that is this very strange, you know, cyan color, okay? So when you're working with something that has color like this, we could try the eyedropper in the first case, okay? I'm going to darken the image first a little bit just so we can see the color a little better. Whenever you use this eyedropper, you have to put it on something that is neutral colored, okay? Because if I put it on his red shirt, it's going to make the image more blue, okay? Can you see the preview in the upper left there? Okay, so wherever you hover your, your cursor over, you'll see a preview in that navigator window at the top here. So if you don't have this open, open this navigator window, okay? If I put it on her jacket, that's way better. Let's try that. Or her shirt or his boots, or his pants. I think I liked what was happening here on her jacket. Right? We can also zoom in a bit so we can get a more targeted choice. Right? right out of the gate, that's way better. Right, So look at the difference. 
right? So we've gotten rid of sort of that cyan cast, right? So that's pretty good. Then we can work with these a little bit as well. If you want to sort of, you know, we can give it a little more magenta, right? Because it's kind of green, but it's kind of like the highlights are a different color. So I, I'm going to go in to work on, um, we can work on actually color grading will be work will work well on this one. So let's just do the shift double click on the whites and the blacks first. All right, I'm gonna go a little more black. Right, now notice as I add more black, the color shift comes back. Right. Let's lower the highlights. Okay, so now we've got something that looks green again. So we could try this one more time or I want to try color grading. Okay, so color grading allows you to adjust the shadows, highlights, and midtones separately. Okay, so I'm going to go with highlights, and you can see that they're really cyan, right? So you don't have to understand the color wheel, it's here visually for you. What's the opposite? So this is the color it is right now. So opposite, it's already there. So I'm just going to drag the saturation up. Look at that. Okay, so see how that's fixing the highlights? So I'm going to drag it up until I see it becoming more neutral, like so. Maybe a little more towards orange. Okay. Now what color is or are the shadows? Okay, is the shadows blue as well? So I can shift the shadows. They actually look red. Okay, so the shadows might need to come from this side. Okay. I can also darken the shadows. Look at that. Okay. So luminance, darken the shadows. And let's see about midtones. The midtones actually look pretty decent, but if I want more sort of flesh color, let's just put orange. Okay. And if you want to see what it's doing, right, drag it up higher. And let's darken those midtones. Seems a little bit green to me, so maybe we want to go a little more to the red. Okay, so look at what color grading is doing. You see that? So from beginning to here. Okay, so basically we've fixed the color problems. Okay. As Rob has indicated, please give the video a thumbs up if you're liking it so far. And feel free to share this on your social media streams even now and people can pick up live. So post this on your Facebook and uh, see who joins in with us. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to do is I actually want to pull this into Luminar because there's a really neat color slider in Luminar, which is remove color cast. Because I still feel like there's some weird shifting in the highlights here, right? So if I go further, I'm getting more red. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad, right? It's it's a far cry from where we started, right? So we started there, and now we're here, okay? So much better. Histogram is looking pretty good, right? Let's see if we got any, any whites. And if you're working on an image that has a white border around it, like some of them do, you have to take that into consideration because the border should be pure white, okay? So if you're doing your clippings, keep going till the border is white, right? Potentially. Okay, so that looks really good. So I'm actually gonna take this one into Luminar. Um, let's make the shadows even a little darker. Here we go. So we could add a little bit of contrast. It's still got this kind of odd tint, hasn't it? Okay, so let's take this one into Photoshop. Um, and I go to Photoshop first because, again, if we're doing non-destructive editing, we want to use Photoshop as a smart object and then whatever filter we're going to apply there as a smart object, okay, because it's it's editable, okay? So if we can come back to this later, okay? So here's my smart object. And from here, I'm going to open Luminar Neo. So it's a filter, okay? So if you're looking for it, it's down here under Skylum and filter, right? Hopefully my computer will catch up and be able to handle this. Let's see, Karen said something. 
<laughs> Good job y'all don't live here then. Uh, okay, yes, we would be crispy. Okay, so the one that I want to work on here is the color tool. Okay, so there's this neat slider right here, remove color cast. Let's just see what it does. It's not bad, right? It's making everything a little bit blue, but that I can work with, okay? That I can work with. So we can come back into develop in the white balance and give it a little bit more yellow, right? Warm it up a little bit. Oops. Like so. Okay, so let's see what we're doing, right? So it's just picking up that shift again. Okay. The other thing we could do is to add a lot. You can do that in, in Photoshop as well. Like you can add a lookup table in Photoshop. If you want, I could show you how to do that. Okay. I'm going to add a vignette in here as well. And we could have done this in Lightroom too. I'm just using all the tools at my disposal. Okay. I'm going to make this round. It's, I'm assuming that the subject is this lady and the person taking the photo possibly doesn't even know this kid, right? So I'm assuming that this is the subject here. Let's, okay. So remember dial the even yet feathered down so you can see where it's going, okay? Like so. Actually, I might darken the floor a little bit more like that. So I'm just dialing the feather down to zero for the placement, the choose subject. Okay, so this is what we had coming into Neo. That's what we got now. Okay. There's another neat tool. Um, I'll show you how to do a lookup table here. Okay, so the LUT is in the mood tool right here. And I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop as well. Like, let's say we want to add um, a toning here. So I know that in, where is it? under creative. Okay. So there's these, these ones here that work quite well. Like look at smoky, right? So smoky is adding contrast and adding some Brown. And it's kind of doing a nice job on this one here. So I like what it's doing there. Okay. And we could also pick up the details while we're here. So picking up details in your photo, right? We can try that, you know, neural filter again back in Photoshop under photo restoration. But this is one of my favorite tools in Luminar Neo, right? If you use the detail slider, look what it's doing, okay? So medium details, see how it's bringing out the face? I don't want to go too far or at all with the small details because it's going to bring out grain or anything in the scan, okay? But we can sharpen here, okay? Remember, masking keeps it off of the smooth areas, so increase the masking a little bit. But just take these things to extreme and see what they do, okay? See what that's doing? Look at the nice sharpening effect, okay? We could also try the super sharp, AI extension. Uh, I'm not a fan of this one, to be honest. Okay. So I'm going to try universal low. It is an AI filter. Um, okay. So <laughs> David says, correct. That's my mom. Dad took the photo. So that's, that's some kid. That's not you, right? <laughs> so the kid is not important. So you would know if that was your family photo, that the lady's important, right? Uh, I will come back to your uh, question in a moment, Raymond, because you asked about the histogram. What does the gray area on the histogram mean and how by looking at it, um, how by looking at the gray area on the histogram to reduce it in the picture? I'm not sure what you mean by reduce the gray area. Um, yeah, see, this sharpening is just taking forever. Oh, there we go. Did it do a decent job? Yeah, I'm not even sure it's doing anything, to be honest. Yeah. It's doing okay. So we could leave it, right? It's doing all right. But overall, from this is what we started with. This is what we got now from Neo. Okay. So let's take this back to Photoshop and I'll show you how to do the LUT in Photoshop. Uh, what did you want to know about the histogram, Raymond? What does the gray area on the histogram mean? I'm not sure what you mean, the gray area. Maybe you meant when I was in, in Lightroom. Okay, so this is coming back to Photoshop. 
do you mean here, Raymond? Or do you mean here in the histogram and the curves? I'm not sure what you mean by the gray area on the histogram. If you could give me more information on that. Okay, so now we're got back in Photoshop. Luminar Neo is applied as a smart filter. Okay. If you want to apply a LUT or a lookup table in Photoshop, you can do that as an adjustment layer. Okay. So make sure your adjustments are showing. Right. If you don't see it, you just go window adjustments. Okay. And the one that you want is called, where is it here? It's got a strange name. It's not photo filter. Color lookup. Okay, so it's called color lookup. Okay, the challenge with that though is that when you get here, you have to load it. Okay, so it doesn't give you previews. You know, there's a few here that you can pick from. Let's just choose this one. Um, it doesn't give you a preview like it does in Luminar. So I actually prefer um, using Luminar to do my lookup tables. Okay, so if you're going to add a lot, I just find it easier to use Luminar because you get the preview when you hover over each one of them. Right. Um, okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Are you happy with that, David? That's, that's your image, right? So if we're happy with that, um, you know, we've done Luminar Neo here and sharpened, given it some more detail. So if you're happy with that, just save it and close it back to Lightroom. And then from there you can, um, print it or do whatever you want to do. Right. <laughs> I'm still not sure what you mean by, is the gray supposed to be there? Is the gray supposed to be there? It's just showing you, um, you mean like this right here? It's just showing you the different colors and the representation. So the histogram, um, yes, please drop me the histogram article in the chat, Rob. Um, that may help Raymond answer that question because I've got an article on histograms, Raymond. So check that out. So how did you make out with this one, David? Is that different than what you did? Or have you done this one yet? Right? So we can look at the before and after. My mouse is going crazy. I'm not even touching my mouse right now. I'm not kidding. Okay. So let's just make a, another one. Where did it go? I want to make a virtual copy. Where did it go? There it goes. Okay, so let's make a virtual copy and I'm just going to reset this one back to the original so we can see what we've done. Seriously, my mouse is possessed right now. Okay, so there's the original. Let's move that one over here. Here's what we did in Lightroom. So here's the progression, right? So original, Lightroom edit technically after Luminar, okay? So we sharpen things up and so on, right? If you want to do a comparison in Lightroom, just pick the images you want to compare and hit C for compare mode, okay? Oops, I want to compare, yeah. I want to compare those two, okay? So you can see the Lightroom version on the left and the after Luminar version on the right. Right, picked up a lot more detail, a lot more sharpening. Look at his, look at the guy's helmet, right? His hat. Right? David hasn't done this one yet. Okay, so there you go. Now you've got a benchmark. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we can do here. Okay, so we've done something with faded color. We did something with some scratches. Um, how about let's work on this negative? Okay, so this negative. Um, this one that Mike sent in, he wants that done in Luminar. So I'm going to bring this over to Luminar and then I'm going to try one of Catherine's as well. So we've done a couple in here. Okay. So coming over here, um, I just need to, okay. So there's the original. Okay. So it comes in and it looks like a negative. So first thing we need to do is crop it. Cause I need to get rid of all this extraneous stuff. So I'm going to go free form. And it's a square negative, it looks like. So I'm going to come all the way down to here and all the way up to here. Let's just get rid of that, right? 
Now to fix this or to invert it, uh, if you've watched my curves tutorial, that's where you're gonna go to do that. So go to curves and literally just invert the curve so that it's upside down and now we have a positive image, okay? And this image seems to be, it's, it's green, right? So we're gonna make this monochromatic, but we could also try and adjust the color here a little bit using the eyedropper here as well. Right, so that helps, right? Immediately it gets rid of the color cast. So whenever you're using this eyedropper, whether that be in Luminar or in Lightroom, whatever you put the eyedropper on, it's gonna try and get rid of any color tint or neutralize that color tint, okay? Right now we can look at the histogram and it's inversed, <laughs> the, the curve is upside down, okay? So I want to stretch this histogram out a bit so that I see, and remember this is gonna be black. So usually white is over here. So we're going opposite, right? So this is now white over here. See that? We can also work on the blacks and whites, but there we go, that works better. Okay, so I'm trying to stretch this out so it goes more over here. There we go, see that? So I'm stretching out the whites to go this direction. And if you wanna see the clippings, just press J. So we've got a little bit of black now. Still looks green to me, but that's okay. And now remember, everything is backwards. So if we increase the exposure, right, we have to go the opposite way to brighten it because everything is inverted because of this upside down curve, okay? So everything is inverted, okay? Surprisingly, except blacks here, blacks and whites, black did actually work on the blacks. I was expecting it to be inverted as well, but it seems to work just fine, right? So right off the gate, right off the bat, we've got a better color and whatnot here. Okay? I'm gonna crop it a little bit more to get rid of this faded bit on the side here as well. There we go. Okay, and I am gonna go black and white. So let's go black and white with this one. Okay. Now, if you convert to black and white, this came up um, actually with somebody else as to why does my image look pink or a uh, tint if it's black and white? That means your monitor is not color calibrated. So when you hit black and white on here and convert to black and white, if you don't see gray, if you see pink or green, that's what your monitor is set to. Okay. So that means you need to do monitor calibration. Oh, hey, Mike. Uh, the reticulation on the sidewalk and throughout the image. I don't know that that's reticulation or that's just film grain. Um, I think that's just film grain, to be honest, Mike. Um, we can take a look at that, though. Let's just see how I can do with this here. Okay, so um, there's something on the sidewalk here. Now, I could bring in... Um, I can work on the details panel on this one as well. So similar to what I did on the other one of David's. Okay, so this one is going to sharpen up the image nicely. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit here. So you see how that's bringing up the detail? Look at that, okay? But look what happens with, oh, I see the reticulation now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's talking about there's an actual pattern here. Can you see that? Um, it's very difficult to get rid of that. So I'm actually gonna take small details to the left, medium details to the right. I think, unfortunately, the Photoshop filter is gonna work on that. I don't know if you're gonna be able to work on that here um, in Luminar, but let's see what I can do, okay? So I'm just gonna make sure sharpening. So sharpening looks good, right? Oh, I see the reticulation now. I did not zoom in to 100% before because I was not seeing it, but I see it now. Um, okay, so let's see if we can solve that. So there is a blur tool, right? We could try the blur tool and see what we can do if we just do like a Gaussian blur and paint it into these areas. It's not the best solution, right? But let's just do a Gaussian blur. And let's get a brush that, so I'm just gonna try and paint into these areas to get rid of some of this, like you said, reticulation pattern. Okay. 
because paint with a little higher opacity. So it's not the best answer or solution, but it kind of works. Right? So we're, we're blurring things as opposed to solving the problem. Otherwise, you're going to be... In Luminar, there isn't an easy way to get rid of that. Right? So I'm actually going to undo this, and let's see what we can do with it in Photoshop. So you could attempt erase. You could use the erase tool here. Right? But you're going to be doing a lot of work. So you're going to have to do sort of like what I would do is just make a few strokes like this. And you're just going to have to keep working it slowly, slowly, slowly to clone it all out, basically. Right? Um, you could also try the clone tool. Right? So here you can get rid of some of the reticulation here. Okay, so it's a lot of work manually to do that. You'd have to go like spot by spot, right? So yeah, a lot of work. If we try the cloning tool, which is down here, right? We could try the cloning tool. Uh, I would set my strength to probably somewhere around like 34%. And this is where the Photoshop cloning tool is superior because you can do your cloning tool set to like a blend mode, right? Um, actually, before I do this, here's a trick, here's a workaround. So you cannot set the clone tool to darken, for example, so that it only fills in the light areas. But what we can do is we can duplicate this layer, okay? And change this layer blend mode to darken, okay? Now it's not, doing anything on this layer because it's exactly the same. But now that this layer is set to darken, we can go clone and it will essentially sort of fake making a clone tool with a darken, right? And I'm constantly sort of resetting my cloning source. So I'm just kind of darkening like this. It's not perfect again, but this is an easier way. And it's kind of, I think there's a video in there, Rob, how to trick the Illuminar clone tool to be dark and blend mode. Okay, so you can just put it on a new layer. See how I'm just sort of cloning this all in, right? So again, it's not perfect, but it's starting. Right? So you'd have to do the work manually this way. Okay. So let's try this in Photoshop instead. Okay. So I've done lots of nice sharpening. Let's save this. Oh, why is it not saving this? Oh, we opened this in, we opened this in Luminar. Right. Okay. So I didn't open this as a plugin. So I'm going to have to export this as to the disk. So if I had done this as a plugin to Photoshop, which is what I should have done, um, I could send this directly to Photoshop. Okay? Unfortunately, you can't send it from Luminar to Photoshop directly. So I would have to save this as a new image to the disk. Uh, let's see where I put it. Put it in the same, where are we at? Restoration folder. I have a lot of subfolders. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in here and I'm just gonna call it edited. I'm not gonna resize it and I'm gonna save it as a TIFF, okay? I don't need transparency. All right, so I'm gonna save that as a TIFF and then I will open that in Photoshop, okay? So I'm gonna go over to Photoshop and open. And where is it? There it is. Okay, so now let's try that neural filter. But before we do that, I wanna make this a smart object, okay? So I need to convert the background layer to a smart object. I just did that by right clicking. And then I'm gonna to go to these neural filters again. And I want to see if it will 
the remove artifacts will help. Okay, so I need to turn it on. Uh, photo enhancement actually worked really well on another one of the images that I tested it on. Uh, let's just take this up really high. And I'm going to take scratch reduction up high as well. And let's see if it, it, let's see if it identifies those things as scratches. Okay. But the other one that I tried it on that it worked really well on, uh, where is it? Oh, was this one that I actually did as the sample image. Um, this is Rob's family. This is one of the ones that we had scanned. But see all this stuff in the background here, right? And there's also lots of blotchiness here. There's some dark spots and so on. I'll show you this one in Photoshop because I just tried it a moment ago and it was spectacular. Okay, so now it's done its thing. Yeah, see it's kind of picking it up, but kind of not. Let's try this halftone artifacts reduction. So I'm just trying things, okay, to see if it's going to work, okay. JPEG artifacts is a little bit different. Okay, it's getting there. Can you see that? So it's, it is doing something, okay. But I'm not crazy about what it's doing on the people. See how it's removing lots of detail on them? Okay, so that's why I would do this as a smart filter because I could paint it into just the ground, okay, or up here. Like it's doing a nice job on the sign. See that? It's doing a nice job in here, right? I'm just going to take these all the way up here. Process, and then we can just mask it in using that mask. So, unfortunately, Mike, the um, the tools in Photoshop, this photo restoration tool, has an advantage over Luminar in this particular instance. Doing you know this kind of thing, uh, it says it's going to take three minutes, so I'm just going to let that run and and work on something else. So, if you don't have this tool and you don't have Photoshop. Try the method that I um, started working on in Luminar to duplicate the layer and then just work on it slowly. Um, there isn't an easier way to do that, unfortunately. There's also in Photoshop the dust and scratches filter. Yeah, so you can see it's kind of doing weird things to the faces now. And I could try the facial enhancement here too. Oh, interesting. I don't see a facial enhancement here, slider here. So it doesn't think there's people in this photo. That's interesting. Has anybody else tried these um, these neural filters yet? Your wife is the smallest child in the photo. Oh, that's cool. So that's her right here. Cool. Yeah, it looks like she moved her head during the exposure. Okay, it's almost done. 10 seconds. I know, right? Yeah, her grin. And they're all standing like at attention with their arms at their sides like this, right? Okay. So it did not a bad job down here and on the on various different areas. So I'm going to leave that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to put it as a new layer, right? So then I can just mask it in. So instead of the smart filter, I'm putting it as a new layer, right? So there's our new layer, right? And I'll just use the black brush. Oops, <laughs> my brush. My brush is smoke right now because I was demonstrating that last week. So let me just change my brush to something normal. There we go, soft round brush, that's better. Okay, so I'm just going to basically remove it off of them. Okay, so it's bringing some of that reticulation back in these areas and you could come in and do a much better job of masking than what I've done, right? So you can mask in here to get the reticulation bits in here, right? 
Yeah, they look like they're standing like little soldiers, right? <laughs> Stand still for a picture and I'll get you some ice cream, right? <laughs> Does that sound about right? Let me take a picture. Right, so, I mean, we can even work on his pants. I just didn't want it on the faces, right? So you can really kind of mask this in. Okay, so that one worked okay, and that was the, the neural one, okay? Yeah, the reticulation is here on the legs too, right? You can also try the dust and scratches filter. Um, I'll just do a another stamp layer. So stamp layer is command option shift E, and what it does is it makes a new layer, which combines everything below it, okay? Um, under here, there's a dust and scratches filter under here, dust and scratches. And we could see just by sort of adjusting like what you get, right? I mean, it makes a big gigantic mess of blurriness. Okay. But sometimes this one will do a decent job. So you could play with that one as well and um, play around with the, yeah, look what it's doing on the face. Not so good, right? So this one, right? Again, the neural filters did a pretty decent job um, on here, right? Definitely did a good job up here. See that? But it's basically just blurring, okay? So play with some blur, okay? I'm not gonna save this one. This one, um, I do want to show you this one because I pulled this one into the neural filters and it did a really good job. And these ones of she, this other one of Sheila's, I haven't tried as well, but I'm curious to try the face enhancement on this one. But I did it on this one and it did a really good job. So let me just bring this one into Photoshop. Um, you did send your finished image. Yes, you did. Uh, let's see. And I'm curious about where did you get the color one, Mike? Because the, how did you, did you colorize it? Like, how did you come up with, with that? Because the color, the image isn't color. So I'm curious how you came up with the colorized version. But yeah, there's definitely the, I can see the reticulation for sure. And honestly, I mean, it's an old photo, so I don't know how much work I would do to try and remove that stuff. Right? Dave has got a good suggestion. Um, remove dust and spots with Photoshop. Use it as a combination with the history brush. So I didn't demonstrate that. But basically what you have to do is apply the dust and scratches filter, set your history brush to that state, and then undo that filter, and then you can paint with that uh, brush. I can show you that if you want. Ah, you use AI to colorize it. Interesting. Okay. See, I, I didn't do that in Photoshop either, but we certainly could. We could. I'm curious to see what it would do, right? The photo restoration is in beta. Yeah. There's like there there definitely is a room for enhancement. Like I literally just turned it on today, um, and then there is room for enhancement. But it's it does a really good job. I'll show you on this black and white one. Yes, you can view this later. This video uh, will show up on our YouTube channel immediately after we finish the live stream. So you can come back to the YouTube channel um, or where you're watching it here on Facebook and get to the YouTube video from there. Thanks for watching. Oh, you did it on a website. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you took the image, you dropped it into this thing, and it gave you um, it gave you a colorized version, and then you blended it back with the original. Cool. That's neat. Okay. So let's see where we're we at. Okay. So this one here, I want to do these this neural filter on here because I tried it a minute ago. Um, so I want to show you some of the challenges, right? So can you see there's like these black spots, and they're all over his face. They're on this guy's leg. There's some scratches. There's some blotchy areas. And then up in here, this whole top sky area, it's like the print was dirty or something um, or something got on it at some point. Right. So what I did was um, I tried this neural filter and at first I didn't even know. I didn't notice what it was doing. Um, but let's take a look here because this photo enhancement one, I'm going to take it up higher. Right. 
because it's fixing or attempting to affix um, contrast and issues like this. Okay? But look what it did. It solved a lot of these problems up in here, right? So this dust area, this dirt solved a lot of that for me. Um, I attempted to do some of that and remove some of it and it was really tedious, right? Notice now the enhanced face slider showed up. It didn't on the other one. So it didn't even recognize their faces. So let's take this one halfway and see what it does. Um, I did it on this one a minute ago and it actually did a really nice job. So it's looking at the eyes and it's trying to refine them a little better, right? So it's like outlining like that one it did of Sheila's, but because they were out of focus in the original image, it just looked bizarre, right? Because the touch-ups were sharper than the original, right? Look at this guy's eyes. Look at how amazing that is. Let's look over here, right? And it's also fixing a lot of the spots, okay? So look what it's doing, right? I think that's brilliant. So it's fixing a lot of the problems, okay? Then um, I drag this scratch reduction up, okay? Let's just zoom out. Okay, and see if it solves a lot of the other problems. So even the black spots, a lot of them have been removed as well. So I'm curious to see if it's going to pick up these black bits. But it's fixing the contrast. The blotchiness, not so much. It's still blotchy. And fixing that's not going to be easy because it's faded unevenly. So the challenge there is to how to get, you know, blacks back into the black areas here. Like, see how blotchy it is? Um you'd have to literally do a painstaking, painstaking brushing in of darkness and stuff. But this, this photo restoration neural filter, see, look, it got most of the black spots now. Oops. <laughs> Something happened to his face. <laughs> That's off. And on. So somewhere along the line, something happened to his face and her face. Um, it looks like it's trying to do the front of her face now. And this girl's hand is missing. Okay, so scratch reduction seems to do something weird. Um, let's just see if I bring that back down a little bit. So you have to find a balance between, okay, it's fixing one thing, but doing a weird thing on another thing, right? Because that's definitely not even his face anymore. And she's got like, two chins and the girl's arm is gone. Okay, so let's see what that does. I am gonna try to colorize on this one just for the heck of it. But we can try that on, on yours as well. Oh, so yeah, just hurry up and wait. Somebody sing a song, you want me to sing? No, you don't want me to sing, <laughs> trust me. Okay, there we go. So now we've got the black spots back again, right? But his face looks better. It's still doing something weird on the arm. Look at the girl's dress as well. It's removed like part of her dress. So I don't know which, which slider was doing that. Was it the scratch reduction? Because somewhere along the line, she's lost her shoulders and the faces and the arm went weird. So if this is the one that's not working so good, what I could do is apply this once, okay, without the scratch reduction, get the faces, get the background working, and then apply it a second time as a new layer and then just mask it in. Because it did a nice job on some of the things like the, the black spots on the legs, right? And other areas, not so much. So that's where layers really is a benefit. Um, you can use as this smart object, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, her hand is back. I'm trying to get a balance here. Can't tell which one it's doing. Uh, let me just scale this one back a little bit, see if that's it. So there's a lot of trial and error. It is exactly what we're seeing right now, David. <laughs> exactly. Anytime you're using AI stuff, it can go wrong in <laughs> strange ways. <laughs> Thanks for working on the picnic photo. I hadn't looked at it in ages. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah, see if you can identify the people. Absolutely. And that becomes the challenge too, right? Identifying the people from two generations ago in some cases. 
Okay, so I like what photo enhancement is doing to the background, but again, not what it's doing to the people. So I think the scratch reduction worked really well, but I'm going to keep the photo enhancement down and then I'll apply that one as a second layer. Okay, so I might do some more work on this one to find the right balance of, you know, applying the scratch reduction and the photo enhancement to get that background issue solved in the dirt um, without going overboard with their, you know, losing an arm and parts of their faces are distorted, right? Yeah, she's the one, mom, which is interesting. So the mom is almost in profile. Like, why is she not looking at the camera? Which is interesting, right? The guy on the left, his collar gets messed up as well. Okay, I'll take a look at that, Gary. Let's just see. We got, it says one more second. <laughs> We're at 74%. And I'm on a wired internet, so we have pretty fast internet here. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm not sure which color, which slider is doing this. I think it's this scratch enhancement for sure. So I'm going to leave this one down and let's try the colorize as well. Let's turn this on. Okay. So you can do manually color or auto color. It's processing again. Let's wait for it. Yeah. It's still doing some weird things on the photo restoration. I'll come back to that one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this one and I'll play a little bit more with it after, but I want to see how colorize does. Okay. So we can do auto color or manual color. Let's see. Let's do retro faded. How about that? It's making a lot of blue and you can really see sort of, it's trying to pick up some green. Um, the faces definitely have picked up. So it's doing an okay job, but yeah, not so great. Uh, I'm interested in that AI that you tried, um, Mike. Send me a link to the, the website that you use because that's quite interesting. Yeah. We can also try manual color, right? Okay, let's turn this guy off. We do not want color eyes. Let's fix this one. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to get out of this one because uh, you, I wanted to show you what a good job it was doing on the faces and on this issue up here. Because otherwise, trying to clone out and smooth that stuff, um, I tried that manually and it was just taking a really long time. Like a really long time, right? So even though I'm waiting for this to process, okay, it still took less time than me doing it manually. <laughs> one blue leg and one brown one. Yeah, the color was not so good, was it? She's giving them in the eagle eye. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's done something. Okay, that's not bad. We've still got her, her shirt. Um, it's fixing a lot of the issues up there. Okay, so it's that scratch reduction that's the problem. So let's do this one as the smart filter. Okay, and I'll apply it once. And then what I would do is cut back and apply it a second time and apply the scratch reduction. And it's done a pretty good job here, you know, with some of the contrast issues as well. But we can add an adjustment layer. And what I would do is curve. So I'm gonna add a curves layer, okay? And we can add some contrast this way. Look at the difference, okay? And it's still a little bit splotchy in there. So again, if I want to, you know, really solve it, um, I gotta mask this one because I don't want it to apply as much on this side of the image as I do over here. Cause I really wanna add more contrast here because they're lacking blacks. So, if I mask this one here, I'm just going to get a really big brush. I could do this with um, a graduated filter as well, but I'm just going to go 20% opacity and just erase down this side here. So see how it's masking this side a little bit. So what it's doing is applying more on that side. Okay. I'm trying to get this side of the image to match this side better. Okay. 
So I want the curves. See how it's darkening that side more? Like so. Okay. And then if I want to, um, okay, what was that question about retouching? Okay, so when I do the new blank layer, there was a question about that before that I didn't show. Um, <laughs> where was Marguerite's question? I'm just scrolling back here. What was your question about the... When I did this part, Marguerite, if you're still here, um, and I've got your image as well. So on the cloning, right, if I want to use the clone tool or the spot healing tool to get rid of like these spots here, I could do it pretty quickly and easily, right? So I just literally do that. Yeah, see, and I could run the dust and scratches filter again um, using the neural one, but I'm just going to run these black spots here real quickly to show you how I would get rid of this. And then this up here, I would use the stamp tool set to blend mode lighten. Okay, so in my opacity, maybe 30%. So again, I'm just cloning down to lighten to get rid of some of these spots that didn't get handled right like so or i could use the same spot healing brush okay and it's just a matter of like painstaking you know doing some of these things okay i switch back and forth a lot you know from one to the other change which angle i'm cloning from right and that's it's a whole lot better than what the original started like and is it perfect no but it's way better right and i'll run that scratches filter a second time so this is where i would do the clone the stamp layer so command option shift e so this is what's called a stamp layer okay so it's incorporating all the layers below as well so then i can make this one a smart object again come back to the neural filters and run the scratches and then just put it where I want it, right? So back to photo restoration. And this time I want scratch reduction. We'll take it up quite high. And then I'm just gonna paint it into the areas where I want it, right? So up here and so on. We could do a little more photo enhancement too. So I'll take this one to the extreme and I'm not doing the faces, right? and then I'll paint it in, okay? Okay, it was about cloning on a blank layer. So did I answer your questions about that, Marguerite, before? And that tube user has a question as well. Let me see while I'm waiting for that. Could the AI's performance and effectiveness be better with the beta considering the numerous updates this month with generative fill? Um, possibly, and I believe I did update my Photoshop, so it should be current. Um, so this is, this is as good as it's going to get. Okay. So obviously now we have a mess on their faces, right? And I think it's even gone too far, um, with the blurring of the bodies and stuff. So the scratch reduction has gone too far because it's, it's not getting, it's not getting that scratch, but it's blurring all this other stuff, right? So I want to paint it into the areas like their clothes, or maybe I'll just remove it from, from what I decide to do with, with a mask is if I only want it in small areas, then I'll make the mask black everywhere and then paint it in where I want it. Okay. So this is going to come on as a smart filter. Okay. See what it's doing. It's removing her arm, <laughs> which is weird, right? So we definitely need her to have an arm. So it's now a smart filter again on this layer. So I'm just going to invert the mask and that's command I, command I, and then I'm going to use a white brush. Okay. So switch my colors X and brush B. That's a really big brush. And I'm going to get my opacity. I usually just press the keyboard to get the opacity. I can press eight on my keyboard and it will give me 80% opacity. Okay. And I just want to paint it in to get rid of these scratches. 
See how it's blurring everything though? So I'm not convinced that the scratches filter is the way to go because it's just blurring. So I might instead choose to go painstakingly and use the um, cloning tool to get rid of that. But it's doing a nice job up here in the sky, right? Do I care if it removes the tree? Eh, not so much. Right? Yeah, it's doing a nice job up here and saving me some cloning time up here, right? But when I go into, like, their clothes, it's kind of making them blurry. So I think I'm not going to apply it there because look how blurry her, her skirt is starting to look, right? It just looks like a blurry blob. So I'm not going to use it on there. So I would just go and use the clone tool here or the healing brush to get rid of these scratches, right? So back to the, another healing layer, right? So now let's say I've worked on this for three hours or something. I'm just going to save it and close it, and it'll come back into Lightroom, and I can continue where I left off at any point, right? All right, let's try something different. Um, okay, so let's try Catherine's in Luminar because she wanted this one brightened. Let's come back to the catalog. Okay, where's this one of Catherine's? Here we go. All right, so Catherine's, we need to crop. So I'm going to try auto composition AI and see if it crops into the image, like way down like I did on the other one. Nope. Okay, so we're going to have to do a free form. And when you have an image like this that has the white border, you can choose to leave it as part of your you know, final scan, or you can remove it and come just down into the image. That's up to you. I don't want to have the edge. So like that. And I think we tilted just a little bit, right? Let's see how that is. Okay. So I'm still got a little bit of the corner. <coughs> I need to tilt a little bit more this way. And let's try that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm keeping the white edge, right? So keep in mind that when you look at the histogram, okay, so again, this is for, um, who had the question? Was it Gary that had the question about the histogram? Uh, where's the histogram article? Raymond. Raymond had the question about the histogram. So when you look at the histogram, okay, all it's representing is black on the left, white on the right, gray tones in the middle. So it's telling me I have a lot of gray and some white. Okay. But keep in mind that this white is the edge. Okay. So let's go into develop and I'm going to turn on the clipping warning. So red shows the whites that are clipping. Again, remember how I said, if you have a white edge, make sure it is clipping, right? I can bring this in to add some black and we need to brighten this image, right? Now we can do that two ways. We can lift the curve, right? This way, or we can use exposure. So remember exposure is mid-tones, okay? Turn off my clipping warnings. This one is gonna be really hard to do anything with because it was so dark. I don't know that we're going to be able to recover their faces, okay? So we can certainly try. I'm just going to remove that. Okay, so when I lift this, there's just not a lot of range here, okay? So if I want to try and lift the shadows, we've got the shadows you know, coming up here, okay? We want more contrast in the middle, so I'm going to try and lift it here. Yeah, this is a really tricky one. Um, you might need to go back and do this scan again, Catherine, because the scan itself is too dark. So when you scan it again, make it a little bit lighter if you can. Um, and if the print, um, that's a good question, Holly. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna recognize face light in here. Uh, when you scan the original print, if it's really dark, you need to make the scan a bit lighter. We can try face AI, but I don't know if it's even going to, yeah, see, so it doesn't even recognize that there's any people in here. Um, it would work on this many faces, but they're just too dark, right? 
Um, let's just see if it works on one of the other ones. Okay, so for example, this one, right? If we want to do face light on this one, we could see if it works on this one. Yeah, see it finds the faces, but it's not finding all of them. Okay, so tricky. You just have to try it. Uh, let's see, would it work on this one? Probably. Let's try face light on this one. So it recognizes the faces. Yep. See, we can just brighten them up a little bit, right? This is another one where I would just do crop so it's tilted a little bit just to get that edge. There we go. Get rid of that edge. Perfect. Okay, so now look at the histogram. And I know you said Photoshop and whatnot for this one, but I want to do another Luminar um, edit, if that's okay, David. I know this is your image. And this is a really great image. I mean, doesn't she look like Shirley Temple? Look at the curls, right? Okay, right? so with the histogram, again, I want to tuck in. So we're picking up more whites, right? I've turned on the clipping warnings and then tuck in. So we're getting more blacks. I'm probably going to turn that face light off. Okay, so... I'm starting to clip up here, so I'm gonna bring it back so that there's no clipping. And then I'm gonna brighten the midtones a little bit and scale this back again. So I think I'm gonna turn this face light off. I just wanted to try it on here, but I don't think they, oops. Face light, come on, there we go. All right, let's turn that off. And then there's our develop. Okay. Let's brighten it a little bit more. So it's a dance, remember? So I've got the clipping warnings on so I can see when I'm hitting too much white. Let's dial that back. But that looks pretty good, right? So just that. Um, in terms of color, would I color correct this one? No, you could. You could make this one black and white and then add your own sepia color if it's gone too yellow, for example, okay? Um, so we could make this one black and white and try and get rid of some of the tint if you wanted to, okay? So we could literally just click on her stockings, okay? So, and then I can make this pure black and white, but I kind of like this tone. Like it's a nice brown and it's got a really nice, there's no problems with it. So I would actually just leave it. And you don't even need to do a lot with this image, right? We can add a little bit of sharpen here. I don't do a lot of sharpening on the raw file. I'll, I'll use the details tool as opposed to this one, right? But look at the difference, right? We're just brightening it a little bit, giving it a bit of contrast, right? Um, the other neat thing that you can do with this one or ones like this is to keep it with the integrity of the original image in terms of um, like a matte black. So we could use the matte tool to do that, or you can literally just lift up the blacks from here, but let's use the matte tool. Okay, so let's close that. Uh, I'm gonna keep the sepia tone color, but maybe I'm just gonna dial the color down a little bit. We could try remove color cast right? It's going to try and remove the sepia. I'm just going to dial it down just a tiny little bit. I could have done that with the, the uh, develop tool as well. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Okay, so under here, under color, I'm just going to dial that down a tiny little bit. And let's say I want it more yellow. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to keep it like this. Just dial it down a little bit. Right. Then I'm going to use that details tool again. So this details tool, David, is, is really great. Okay, so there's a boy on the right, he says. They're both wearing girls' shoes. Interesting. And who's the one on the left, David? Um, is that your aunt or your mom? Is that your mom? Probably mom, I'm going to guess. Okay, so let's zoom in. Oops. Zooming a little too far. 
Okay, so we've got some grain we could probably deal with there, and there are some scratches and stuff. So I could run this through the Photoshop filter, but it's pretty clean, right? It's pretty clean. Look at that nice level of sharpness. See this this details tool? I love what it does. Okay. Oh, the large details. Look at that. That's bringing out some nice contrast. Hey, look at that. See, it's look look at the face here and the eyes. Looks way sharper. Okay. Do you know why? Do you guys know? We talked about this. That's your aunt. Okay. Um, <clears throat> We talked about this before, but do you know why a lot of these pictures are, are blurry? The people are blurry. Anybody, any guesses? Should we do a poll of some kind, Rob? Let's ask them a poll. Let's do a poll. Just tell me in the chat. Let's just do me in the chat. Um, another good question about denoise in Lightroom. Yes, we could certainly try that as well. Um, Tell me in the chat, have you attempted photo restoration before? Uh, and if so, have you picked up some tips today that are going to help you, right? Karen says, camera shake, you're on the right track. Subject had to sit too long and got restless. <laughs> yes, you're on the right track. Movement, yes. They had to sit still for too long, yes. Um, you're all on the right track. Basically what, what was the issue back then was that the cameras and the film, well, the film was really low ISO, for example, like if we think about like ISO 100 as being our low on our digital cameras, they had maybe ISO 16. Okay. So try photographing something with ISO 16. First of all, there is no handheld. <laughs> they used a tripod for almost everything. Okay. And yeah, the exposures were up to like one second long. And so kids, especially, and you'll see like the stoic expressions, like we saw in some of the group pictures, because they have to sit still for one second. Right. And that's why you, you get these kids. Yeah. Never attempted, but would try now. Awesome. Tips are helping. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. So let's go back to this one here. Okay. So now if I want to do some of the toning, um, we can use the mood again, or I could just use toning. We can also do that matte look that I suggested. So it kind of gives you that faded black and white. Oh, still got my clipping on. Okay. So it gives you this sort of like faded out, um, look that we started with. So if you want to keep sort of that integrity, right, of the image, I kind of like the contrast. So it's up to you. You know, if you want to keep the faded look very soft like that, okay, or do you want to add um, some contrast? I mentioned we could use the curves that I used here. So we could literally just bring this up See how that's making it matte again, right? But that's kind of why we're doing the restoration is to bring the contrast back, right? So you get to decide. Like I said, it's your image. You get to decide. Do you want to leave it nice and soft and a bit flat or do you want to bring the contrast back, right? Um, was there another tool in here that somebody would like me to try? Marguerite says the inverted curves tool. Yeah, I talk about that actually in the curves tutorial. So maybe Rob, can you share that one as well? Um, for example, like if you're adding an edge, a grunge edge to your image and the same thing works in um, Luminar as well. So I didn't do that. Um, oh no, I did do that in Luminar. Okay, but let's say we wanna add a filter or a layer, okay? Let's say I wanna add one of these, these edge grunge things to the edge, like here, like this. Um, I've got another one that actually is a, I've got one that is a film edge, which might be cool on this one. And I just downloaded these, you know, from, I looked for free grunge edge filters or free grunge edges. And I've got one that's a film grain. Here it is. Okay. So let me add this one and it's probably going to put it on the wrong way. I wish there was a rotate on a layer in Luminar. We don't have rotate and I wish there was. 
Oh, hey, Lee. Uh, let's just wait for it. Uh, learned some new things today, Deb. Awesome. Learned a couple of things. The color grading. Haven't used that in restoration. Yeah, I would. I definitely would use that, David. See how it worked really well on that color image of yours. <clears throat> Tried without much success. Stunned at how details. Yeah, details tool. I love the details tool. Absolutely. Learned some new tricks. Excellent. Okay, so did I add this layer or not? It's still thinking about it. It's still thinking about it. There we go. Okay, yeah, so it goes on this way. And I have to rotate it. I wish there was a rotate on the layer in here. There isn't. There it is. Okay, so I want it to go this way. And then fit to the image. I'm kind of doing this the difficult way here. See, it's kind of that film edge, right? So I want it to go like this. Right now, I just need to change the blend mode, right? So if I change this to darken, this is the look that I get. Okay, but what if I want it to look white on the edges? Okay, so I want the opposite okay all i need to do is go into curves switch it up right inverted curve come back to my layer properties and change it to lighten and now we've got white edge okay so curves uh, inverted curves is a really cool thing i don't think i would use this layer on here but you could see how inverted curves works on an added layer as well one other thing you can do with layers in Luminar, you can do this in Photoshop as well, is to duplicate the layer, okay? And I showed you that with cloning and changing the blend mode. If you change the blend mode to multiply, okay, it adds contrast and punch. So if you like your editing and what you've done, but you just wanna give it a little more oomph, okay? Multiply works great, like so, okay? There's our before and after. These are great images, David. I mean, these are, you know, family heirlooms that um, they are fantastic. Uh, let's work on this color one. And I want to do this one in Luminar as well. So we did one color one already in Lightroom. So let's do a color one in here. And it's got the same kind of issue, right, where we've got um, some weird color on the edges. So I'm going to start with color in the eyedropper, assuming that this edge of this print should be white. Okay. Now it kind of did okay, but I found that I actually did a better job putting it on her shorts. And let's take it even further. So I want to get rid of even more yellow. Now we're getting close, right? And let's see. Okay, so there's kind of some brown happening in there. And this one might be one that would might work well in the Photoshop, you know, adding color. But something else Rob wanted me to show was to use the extend, um, the AI stuff to extend things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this, you know, the best color possible. Um, let's just see what we can do here. I don't know if I can get any better... Uh, I can definitely increase the white, okay? And increasing the black is going to give us more color, right? Now it still looks yellow to me, right? Assuming that the sky was originally blue, I don't think we're ever going to get blue sky, but we can try and get it a little bit closer. Like so. All right, now the edge is blue, but I think we're getting closer. And we're going to crop. I'm going to go crop this edge. So I'm going to straighten it so it's straight, first of all. And I'm going to get rid of the white in this case. Let's go freeform. I don't want the white edge, which is now blue. And come as close to the bottom as possible. So they're missing their toes, right? I still feel like it's a blue, but we can use that 
Um, so the grading, color grading that I used in Lightroom, you'll find the similar one here in Luminar under toning, right? So highlights right now are a little on the blue side. So I could add some highlights, yellow, just to bring that back a little bit. And then shadows. Do we want to make the shadows bluer, I think? Okay. We're still not getting any decent kind of color in their skin. Let's try something pinker. And let's do a little vignette because it's kind of got some edge stuff going on here. Let's darken the edges a little bit. There's still a little bit of blue on the edges there, right? We've got some weird funky stuff going on on the edges. And of course I cropped, so I'm going to need to bring it in a little bit. I'm going to go back to develop because I think that color is now gone too far. There we go. That's better. That's better. And that's better. Okay, so now here we are. And if I want to um, do some things like uh, we could try lightening their faces and let's see if face AI works on them. Yeah, it does. Okay, see that? I'm not sure that's going to help us in this case, though. What I want to do is bring it back to the catalog because I want to take it into Gen Expand. Okay, so we're going to open it in Gen Expand and see about adding some stuff to the bottom here. So I want to. Yeah, it's not showing me, but I'm just going to enter. Let's just see what happens if I do nothing. Okay. See you, Stephanie. I think we're doing mountains next week. So send in your mountain photos. Uh, you restored, Robbie's restored a few, mostly restoring physical damage. Yeah, that's the common one, right? Okay, now I can't see their feet because this thing is in the road and I wish I could move it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it looks like they've got some feet. Now let me see if I can go one more time. There we go. And let's... Now I've lost the... Now I've lost the tool. Where did it go? There we go. Let's give them a little more space. No, I've totally lost the tool. Interesting. Lost my tool. Okay. I can't see the bottom. See, this is a problem here in Luminar. I'm going to actually send this to them because... I can't see the bottom of the image. It won't let me move down. Yeah, it won't let me get to the bottom of the image. I can't get, grab the handles. See that? I can go this way. Interesting. Yeah, can't get to it. Strange. I wish I could do that. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, so Gen Expand. Let's say I just want a little more space over on the side here. Yeah, that's a little design flaw in the interface because I can't get to the bottom handle to expand it. And then once I got rid of the prompt, I couldn't get the prompt back. All right, let's just expand this a little bit. And see what we got. Was there something else that you wanted me to um, demonstrate, Rob, that I haven't? I'll take a look back in Lightroom to see if there's a technique or something that I haven't shown yet. We've looked at all kinds of different methods. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that's that's weird. <laughs> and wall of house and wooden porch floor. Let's try entering. Oops. 
I spelled floor wrong, so let's see what happens there. A glossary of photo restoration terms. Interesting. Um, that's a good question, Mike. How do you know what to ask when you don't know what to ask, right? <laughs> what to call something. Um, do you have any examples of, of terms that you don't know what to fix? Um, I mean, there's contrast, there's scratches. Yeah, this is obviously not working well. So I'm not so happy with the Gen Expand on this one, right? If we do the same, let's try the same thing. Where's that color image? Let's try this same one in Lightroom and Photoshop. Okay, so my color dropper, let's do that. Let's see if I can get a better color too. That's actually not bad. Uh, let's give it a little more. See, so notice when you add black, right? You get more color. I am going to crop it here. Down to get rid of that white edge again. Okay, there's kind of a blue um, edge on the side here as well, doing something weird, right? So if I give this more, it still feels brown to me. There. That's probably closer, but still not, right? It's just, it's got a bizarre color. So let's take this to Photoshop and see what we can do with a few different things. I definitely want to use the expand. Uh, Mike says, reticulation, a friend at the camera club call, told me what to call the issue. Um, yeah, that's a bizarre one. I mean, think about like reticulated Python. It's a pattern, right? So yeah, reticulation. Um, what else? I mean, grain, like what we would call noise now would be grain. There was another thing in the Photoshop thing that was half tone, um, reducing half tone. So for example, if you have an old newspaper clipping and you try and scan it, you'll see the dots. That's a half tone. Uh, saw some pics uh, in Arizona highways. That's a great magazine, by the way, that were faded Kodachromes. Use a lot of individual masks and color individual masks. Looks perfect, though. Any tips for restoring faded slides? All the same tips that I used here are going to apply there. So when they're faded, you need to add the black back in. But if the color is gone, you can't really bring it back. But you could you know, try that colorization thing or try the online tools that are available. You can also use a color layer and paint things in. Um, we can try that. So that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Astonishing to me how some developers overlook such fundamental and apparent user issues. It, it is peculiar, yeah. And, and I find that that's an issue quite often in Luminar where I can't grab the handles to size something. And I have already told them about that for the other things, but I'm going to let them know about this because that's the first time I've tried to do it on a vertical image and I couldn't expand the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, typically images fade from being in the sun. Exactly. Yeah. And then the reds are left. Yeah. Okay. So now we're in Photoshop. Uh, let's just try. Do we want to do the neural filter? Let's try the neural filter and see what we get with the colorization on this one because there's already some color there. So let's see what, what Photoshop is going gonna, is gonna to attempt with it. So let's try color eyes. Got to turn it on. That's interesting. <laughs> it changed the color of their um, shirts. Let's try retro. Let's try different settings. Retro purple yellow. Well, it's interesting. Um, they obviously had purple or pink red shirts on and it's not, it's not really changing anything. All right, let's try not auto.
Nothing is really changing when I apply these settings. Nothing is happening. Manually color image. Oh, we've temporarily disabled this filter because of an error. All right. Well, apparently this filter is not working very well. So let's just try what happens if I toggle it on and off. It gives us that. And then if I try anything else, yeah, this filter be, makes an error. So apparently the colorization tool is not working so good. Let's do a little bit of scratch reduction. See, it's like it's got a yellow tint up here, right? Color noise reduction, half tone. Okay, so half tone, that's that slider I talked about. Um, there's definitely noise here. I don't know if it's color noise. Uh, we'll bring that up a little bit. And they're calling it noise reduction, but really it's grain. And we're still got some scratches and things here. It's not really doing anything, is it? So, yeah, now it says this one is not working either. So let's just see what happens when I put it on a new layer. Okay, so there it is. It wouldn't let me change anything, um, but let's see about adding feet. So the um, generative tool in Photoshop is actually really easy to do. <laughs> to expand, right? Oh, I hate this thing. This thing makes me crazy. But at least you can move it, okay? Pin it over there. Is just get the crop tool, and when you expand, it literally will fill it in for you, okay? So it gives you this generative fill. So I'm just going to hit enter and see what it comes up with. Um, yeah, the absence of cyans and yellow is due to the effect of the sunlight over time. Exactly. Yeah, it fades. Every image fades in a different way, and it depends on the original paper and brand and so on. Okay, so Photoshop doesn't always do very well with feet. That one's not bad, right? But it's kind of doing some weird, you know, I don't think, it looks like she's standing in a... Um, for you Canadians, it looks like she's standing in a Tim Hortons drink takeout box. Like that one actually sort of fits, right? Because it's already faded out. So if we want, you know, them to have feet, that's not bad. Thanks for that, Rob. Okay, so that's not that's not bad, this middle one. So I might go with that, right? Um, and if this colorized version, if I'm not crazy about it, um, we can literally just turn down the, oh, see now I've turning down the opacity of, of this colorization layer. Um, and I can't do that because this layer is colorized as well. So I'm just going to come back to this colorization layer and see maybe to put it at a lower opacity, right? It's definitely better. Yeah, it's definitely better. And I've got the opacity at 70%, so it's still 80%, still a little faded. So I'm going to do the generative one again. Right? So now that I've expanded it, now I have to select this here. So I'm just going to select and see what it fills with. I'm going to have to call it soon because I've drank all my coffee. And I'm um, going to need to use the little girl's room here right away. Um, but you can see how easily two hours is taken up doing this kind of editing. I don't know what kind of shoes he's got on, but they're a little bizarre. Uh, again, that's not bad. Her feet look better. Now he's got little tiny feet, little tiny feet, right? So that, she doesn't even have any shoes on. Let's try regenerate one more time. Yeah, so she's got no shoes or he's got like size two feet. <laughs> Take care, Nick. See you again. Uh, photo taken before squats were known. Yeah, he's got skinny legs, doesn't he? 
Okay, so at least she's got some sandals on, but he's got tiny feet again. Oh, those are interesting. Eh, no. So I think those are probably the best ones. Um, yeah, he's got little tiny feet in all of them except this one. Okay, so that's not bad. That's better. And there's a yellow kind of tint up here. So these kinds of things, yeah, are are exceedingly, you know, that's what I brought from Lightroom and it color wasn't great. So it's definitely an improvement, but these kinds of things are, are exceedingly difficult to get rid of without a lot of extra editing. Like for example, this yellow up here. So <clears throat> to get rid of the yellow, <clears throat> what I might do is um, I would do a e Q and saturation layer. Okay, so I've done a hue and saturation layer, and I am going to, I can shift the color. Oh, that's not even what I want either. Where is it? Color balance. That's the one I want. I want color balance. So I got the wrong adjustment layer. So color balance layer, okay, and it's, eh, I think it's mid-tones, and I want to shift it away from yellow. So I'm looking at this area here, right? So I'm shifting it away from yellow. That's better. And then of course I have to paint it into that area. Okay, so I'm gonna invert the mask. Command I, oops. You can also right click, where are we? Why is it not inverting my mask? Invert the mask, invert the, there we go, invert the mask, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to paint with the white brush into these areas here. So I'm gonna paint with maybe 30% opacity with a soft brush, okay? And I'm just trying to go over these areas that I can see are yellow, right? It's kind of this strip down the middle here. Right, can you see the yellow going away? So I'm painting with that color balance. Look at that's working. See that? Right in the middle here. Something on her blouse. Oh, it's yellowed. The wall, the water's yellow down here. So let's do that. Oh, I got her leg. And her leg's now blue, so that's no good. Her shorts are blue. So not so much on this area. So now let me just turn this layer off. You see how it's solving that yellow stain a little bit? So I used color balance and then just masked it in, okay? So I'm gonna save this one and bring it back into Photoshop. Or Lightroom, sorry. <laughs> so there was, there was our original, let's just undo this one. Let's reset this one. So as I said, David sent some really great images, some great examples here. Uh, where are we? Where's the original? There we go. Okay, so that was our original. <clears throat> My mouse is going crazy again. And there's the after. Okay, so we gave them some feet, fixed the color a little bit. Is it perfect? No, but it's better, right? How's that, David? So if the feet look better in one generation for one person and better for the other uh, person on different, you can... Um, so making the best match for each I did in this case, or I could pick the one that was best for her and then reselect his feet and do it again and get the best one for him. Um, and it will do another layer. Yeah. So if you haven't done this one yet, David, you've got some, uh, you got some homework, but that looks pretty decent. Um, I want to know who these people are. Is that your mom and dad? So Travels of the parents. 
the color swatch. So that yellow strip that I did down the down the side. You've played with this one. Okay. I wonder, do you know if it where it was taken as well? Like looks like maybe some lake or something. Two months before they were married. Oh, nice. Awesome. Do you have your dad's legs? <laughs> They have the same legs, though. They're very slim, very slim. So I think we're going to call it a day um, on this one. Let me call up the, oh, I don't know what's happened there. Uh, let me call up what's happening next week because we are going to be doing, uh, I don't have it in here. I do not have it in here. Let me switch my catalog. So as I mentioned, I had a major snafu on my Luminar catalog. Brome Lake 1950. Okay. And what we are doing next week is mountains. That's what I was trying to get to here. So there we go. So mountains next week. If you haven't already sent in your images, please do so. Um, and that is... I'll get a link for you because Rob is away from his desk. So the form to send in your images for mountains is in the chat. If you're watching the replay, it's in the description area below. So next week is March 17th, St. Patty's Day. So actually it's kind of appropriate that we're doing mountains. We'll have some greenery. Everybody wear your green and uh, I won't see you, but wear your green. I'll have a green background. How's that? I'll try to wear something green and I'll have a green background. So we'll see you next Sunday, same time, same place for photo editing mountains on St. Patty's Day. Take care and have a great rest of your weekend.